Hey, Chris. Hey. Yeah, what? Hey. The power's out. Okay, I'll, I'll go check. Well, well, just wait a minute, because I can just put my slippers on since I'm in shorts and a t-shirt. So okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go out and, and check and see. Okay. Okay. You hold on to Grizzy. I got him. See the batteries work. Oh yeah, the batteries work. Well, it's about 10:10 at night, and the power just went out. But it's only about 98, sometimes 100 degrees. Um, we're waiting for some word from the park to see what's going on, and we'll probably end up firing up the generator here in a little bit to make it tolerable so we can get through the night. We'll see what's happening. We'll keep you posted. Last night, we uh, ended up having uh, the power go out. Uh, Shelly heard it. She heard what sounded like an explosion. She went out to check and about half the park had lost its power. So she checked with our neighbors right next to us. They've got a small class A. And they said, yeah, theirs was out too. And we could see about half of the pedestals. Didn't have the little lights on them, letting you know that they had power. And there was a poor guy, some poor guy that had come in from New Mexico and just gotten into a pulse through spot. And he thought that he had caused the outage. It wasn't him. Uh, we think it's something out on the street. Someone may have hit a, hit a transformer or something like that. But I sure feel bad for the guy that had just come in. I don't think he wanted to spend uh, an evening with near 100 degree temperatures without any power. And I don't think he had a generator. So uh, I think they packed up early and uh, left to get back on their way. They were just doing an overnighter anyways. What a shame. Well, the first test of our generator since the failure to start when we were moving last week was an unexpected but pretty great success. Our generator is kind of a new old stock, uh, Onan Marquis 7000. It has always done what we've asked of it. It's nothing fancy and in fact the only extra we have on it is a Onan remote start switch. Yeah, a manual. And we've got a Hobbs meter on the start switch panel inside the RV. It is a gasoline uh, Jenny, and it came with a six gallon marine plastic fuel tank that we mounted outside of the doghouse and plumbed the fuel line inside so it sits in the front bay on a sturdy table that is strapped to the floor and back wall. Now filling it's kind of a pain, but it does give it a chance to kind of cool off for a while before we run it again. It burns through a little more than about a half a gallon of fuel per hour at idle and about 1.1 gallons under load. We can run both ACs at a time if need be and the fridge, but you wouldn't want the electric side of the uh, hot water heater to kick on or you'd pop a circuit breaker. Using a hairdryer or the microwave usually means you've got to shut down at least one AC. It's just power management. We have two transfer switches in the basement. One came with the rig for the solar and the other we added for the Jenny. Last night was our surprise test of the system since we added the new start battery, monitor, and charger. Now we also added a bilge blower to that compartment, not the doghouse. To evacuate any errant fuel or battery gases before starting. One other thing we added is a fuel vent for the tank to the outside of the rig. Kind of like uh, in a boat. It was about 9.30 p.m. last night and I was falling asleep when Shelly heard an explosion and noticed that the power had gone out. We got up to check and sure enough, we were on house batteries. She went outside to talk with neighbors and found a family who had just pulled in and hooked up when it happened. I think they thought they may have done it. It was just under 100 degrees last night and there was no way 
we were going to stay in the RV without ACs. So we pressed the remote start, fired it up, and it purred away. About 30 seconds later, we heard the clunk and the transfer switch had done its thing. Now, whenever we move or lose power, we make it a point to turn off the ACs and anything with a bigger power draw so our system doesn't get hit with such a big jolt. We then turned on just the bedroom AC to help cut down on fuel usage. I had earlier only put in a couple of gallons of fuel in the tank when I was working on it. If it took longer than two hours to get the power back up, then I'd go back out and put some more fuel in it to get us through the night. You could not hear the generator over the ACs and could barely tell that it was running after startup. The three of us laid down to get a little of our snooze on, occasionally getting a slight odor of exhaust from our neighbor's generator. I was confident that we would be fine because I had recently changed out our CO slash propane detector about two months before. Two hours later, something woke Shelly and she asked how we'd know if the power came back on. For us, it's just shut down the ACs, then the generator, and see if either the AC or AC appliances would fire back up or were on. She shut it down and I could see that a USB clock that was plugged into an AC outlet was still on. Whatever the problem was, it seemed that a crew had repaired it. We then fired up the ACs one by one and settled in for a nice cool sleep. Another success. Our generator had saved us again and two more hours were added to the Hobbs meter. Now, the only other options we had were to either tough it out in our skivvies, nah, not gonna happen, go to one of the uh, recreation centers at the park that still had power, get a hotel or beg a friend to have mercy on us or finally to spend an hour or two breaking the rig down, closing up and moving it to a space not affected by the blackout. Today we're going to rest and relax from our little adventure and tomorrow early, while it's kind of cool, I'll go out and fill the fuel tank and then top off our jerry cans for whatever the winds of fate might bring us. We will be confident that our emergency generator is online and standing by to be called on at a moment's notice. Sure glad we got it back online last week. Our next big test will be to run it and the ACs while moving the rig. We should get to do that in the next couple of weeks. It'll be nice to have the rig pre-cooled when we get to our next park. It is a constant juggling match to try and stay on top of all the systems in your RV. But as we've experienced these last couple of weeks, if you don't exercise all the systems in your rig frequently, you might not know that there's a problem with a vital one until it's too late. And now you're up to your neck in alligators. PDQ. That's pretty darn quick. We've had a night to cool off and relax from all the excitement. And while walking Grizz, I got a chance to talk with a groundskeeper about the power failure last night. He said that he didn't know what had caused it, but that it was not something inside the park. When we got back, I took Grizzly in to cool off and came back out to fill the generator's tank. It's not hard, just cumbersome. Involving a six gallon jerry can we keep locked in the back of the truck, getting it out, putting it on a chair and a box beside the compartment, grabbing our siphon hose and moving the fuel from the can to the fuel tank manually. Now these are amazing. It's got a little bitty marble inside there and it makes siphoning a breeze. And that's the way we get the fuel inside of the generator. I stick this into the fuel tank. And now it's just kind of sit and wait. I got one finger in the tank so I can feel the level as it's coming up. And then I can pull the uh, marble end out and that shuts off the siphon. It's not as fast as a 5 8 inch garden hose, but it sure saves you from having to deal with 
gasoline in your mouth. Five minutes and I'm done. Just a side note, we use Avgas 100LL in our generator as we have from the beginning. It starts and runs better and has never failed to start because of fuel gumming issues. Anyone in aviation will attest that this is designed that way because some aircraft will sit for a long time between flights and that could cause a critical failure at an inopportune time if it had that tendency. If you're using autogas, it is recommended that you use some type of additive to help prevent that problem and consider changing out the fuel at least once a year. With Avgas, we've eliminated that problem. Sure, it's more expensive, but we don't use it that much. Now, we might consider autogas if we were, say, boondocking for an extended period, but when done, I would flush the tank with Avgas and then run it through the generator so that it was back in our normal state. Guys and gals, thank you again for sticking around for another interesting week with OLT. We definitely seem to keep learning new things. I mean, after all, who knew that you could have a boondocking experience in your luxury RV park? Life is an adventure. Thank you for watching and sharing here on OLT. Please travel safe.